In today's video, we'll be looking at a problem from the pretty famous and pretty tough Putnam math competition and it's from the year 2000 and it's question number 82. And the reason I'm posting this is because it's it's about number theory and even though it's a pretty simple problem, it's still pretty interesting as to how it's solved. So here we go. The question states, prove that there exist infinitely many integers n such that n, n plus 1, n plus 2 can be written as the sum of two squares. So the question is essentially saying is that I can write 0 as 0 squared plus 0 squared. I can write 1 as 1 squared plus 0 squared. And I can write 2 as 1 squared plus 1 squared. And it wants us to prove that there's not only one of these triplets, one of these three integers, which can be written as, as the sum of two squares. There's an infinite number of these triplets. And before we actually begin going into the math, I'd like to point something out. When we actually began this problem, when I actually began solving this problem on my own, this is how I went about it. I said, let n equal a square plus b square, where a and b are just some arbitrary integers. Let n plus one equal a square plus b squared plus one. And let n plus two equal a square plus b square plus two. And for the first case, it's obvious that it fulfills all the conditions. This is an integer, this is an integer, this is an integer as well, and they're all perfect squares. But for the second and third one, I, we, I had to complete the square and then some conditions got involved and it became much more complex. So instead, the proof that I'm gonna show is a bit different. But I just wanted you guys to know that there's there's lots of ways to prove this. Anyway, first off, let's say that n plus 1 is a perfect square. This means n plus 1 equals a square plus 0 square, where a is again just an integer. So we have that n plus 2 will naturally be a square plus 1, which is just a square plus 1 square. And both of these fulfill the conditions. So there's no problem with the sin. But now let's look at n. So n is going to be a square minus 1. And this, this is not a perfect square, of course, because it's negative, right? So in order to make this expression into something useful, we have to use completing the square. So we have n equals a square minus 1. And this is equal to a minus 1 whole square plus 2a minus 2 and now you I'll just show you guys that it's the same thing when I open this up I get a square minus 2a plus 1 plus 2a minus 2 and then these two a's cancel off and I get left with again n is equal to a square minus 1 anyway now that we have it in this you somewhat useful form plus 2a minus 2. Now what to do? Well, it's plain and simple that this guy is going to be a perfect square, obviously, because it's raised to the power of 2. But what about this guy? Well, this guy is a bit different. Let's look at this expression. Let's call this expression y. Let's say y equals 2a minus 2. And now let's say a equals 0. Well, y is going to be equal to minus 2. Yeah. Now a equals 1, y equals 0, a equals 2, y equals 2 as well. And so you get the picture. Basically, this function, this y, is increasing and it always remains even. So basically, this function can give us any, any real even value, any real even value. But what we want is not even values like 2. Those are useless for us. We just want values like, say, 4, 16, 36, 64, and so on. Let's see how we're going to get those. Well, I suggest that if we say let a equal 2m squared plus 1, where m is an integer, then we'll get 2 into a minus 2. This is equal to 2 into 2m squared. 
plus 1 minus 2 and then this becomes 4m squared plus 2 minus 2 and then these two cancel off and we get left with this 4m squared and then this 4m squared this guy is always going to be a perfect square because m is an integer and if we take the square root of 4m squared we get 2m so this guy is basically a perfect square always right and now now is for the part where a few people might get tricked. The question was worded in a pretty strange way. It asked to, for us to prove that there's an infinite number of these triplets. And now I'm going to make you guys see exactly how to prove it. First off, we can say that m can be any value, right? So let's say m is 0. Then we get a is equal to 2 times 0 plus 1 and we end up with a equals 1. Let's say m equals 1. In this case, a equals 2 into 1 plus 1, and this is 3. Now let's say m equals 2. We get a equals 2 into 2 whole square plus 1, and this is 9. And so you can see, we can put any real value of m. We can put 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, all the way to infinity. All the way to infinity. And we'll get a corresponding value of a. And once we put this value of a into our original expressions, which were n equals a minus 1 whole square, plus 2a minus 2, and plus 1 equals a square plus 0, and n plus 2 equals a square plus 1 square. And if you put these corresponding values of a that we just got from, from actually choosing any value of m, then we can get any value of n, right? And that means since there is an infinite number of values of m, then there's an infinite values of n. And so we've proven that basically the, triplet, the number of triplets that we can get is not finite because we can use any value of m that we want and we'll still get a corresponding value of m. That was the proof. Thank you for watching this video. Have a nice day.